Hi and welcome to my Halloween special. I've teamed up with the fabulous Morgana Rose Art and we've challenged each other to find the beauty in sort of the Halloween theme. Um, so we both went off and came up with something which we think that hopefully you'll really enjoy. They're both very different. And this is what I came up with, this um, semi-abstract cobweb or spider's web with a sort of dark and moody abstract background. And this is what Morgana painted, this wonderful black cat with a pumpkin, mushrooms and other sort of beautiful things in these lovely Halloween colours. So follow the link below to watch that demo as well. And say hello from me and subscribe to her channel if you haven't already. She's got lots of amazing demos over there. Um, so I think you'll really like it. So let's get started on the cobweb demo. Um, I'm using Milford cold press paper. It's taped to my board um, with ordinary decorator's masking tape. And you can see that I've got this cobweb drawn out here and I have used a masking pen um, called the mask pen, I shall leave details of it below, um, to mask out the whole spider's web. Um, it got a little bit blobby in places, but that's because I'm not very good at using it. But I think it's going to be absolutely fine, but I just need to leave the masking fluid spider's web or cobweb to dry completely. So as soon as it's dry, I'm going to use um, a sort of medium-sized synthetic round brush uh, this is a Polina Bright size one and some Bombay ink. It has to be waterproof because I'm going to be going over it with lots of water later. And just putting in a few twigs and sticks, making sure I meet up with some of the edges and the strands of my spider's web that I want to appear to be joined onto these twigs, if you see what I mean. So I'm sort of reverse engineering this. Um, I'm drawing or painting directly over my masking fluid areas and hopefully once those are removed then the spider's web or cobweb should be fully in front of these twigs which would just give structure to the painting. And then as soon as it's finished, I need it to dry completely because once um, this Indian ink sets off and dries, it becomes completely waterproof. Now that it's dry, I've laid my board flat and um, I'm going to use um, a misting spray. It's like a diffusing spray and it's not an artist one. It's the type that hairdressers use. And it's really important to use one of these because it gives a really lovely, long, fine misting spray. And I can get these little dappled patterns onto the paper where the water hits it. So I'm randomly spraying my paper, but making sure it's not too, um, too drenched. I need plenty of unpainted paper as well to create the patterns that, that I want. Now this is Brusho. It's a type of dry, powdery, intense ink, and I'm using four colours. I'm using burnt sienna, orange, olive green and black. Each little pot is sealed and you pierce the top, the lid, and then tap out the powder. You see that I'm shaking it quite vigorously. And it's not really looking very effective, but just wait. As soon as I've got enough powder on, I shall give it a quick spray with my um, misting spray and the water should just spread all the brusho out. If you don't have brusho, you can create similar effects with either ink or very pigmented, strong watercolour spattered onto the page and then spray that. And if you spray in the direction that you want your ink droplets to run and then tip and tilt your board around, you'll end up with some lovely effects. Um, so this is what I ended up with. And now I'm just framing the painting um, using a large wash brush. This is an Escoda size 14 synthetic mop and I'm using it just dipped in water and joining up some of these areas of brusho um, into sort of like washy patterns around the edges and just leading into the pattern, but still leaving as, you know, as much as I can of those pretty, um, droplet patterns and sort of crisscross of different colours 
um, that has been produced with the water mister and the brusho powder. And then when, once I get it looking the way I want it to look, then I can um, leave it to dry. But if I've got any areas of water where it's pulled up a bit too much, I can just dab that out lightly with a tissue. I can also add a bit more brush o here and there if I want to, like I'm tapping in a, a few little um, taps of the olive green, activating it with a bit of water, um, sort of letting that um, just give me a bit more tone in the bottom left corner. I'm now going to leave it to dry completely and I'm drying it flat um, and then we'll come back and see how it looks. And here it is. I'm really, really pleased with it. There's not a lot I need to do. The brusher has given me this beautiful background. So now I need to just carefully rub away and pull off the latex masking fluid to reveal my unpainted spider web or cobweb. Be careful with this because I did find that even with my 100% cotton paper that the masking fluid tore the paper surface a little bit. So take your time and if you do get any small tears, don't worry because you can sort of go in with a little bit more paint afterwards. But it's certainly worth testing out your masking fluid on your paper first to see how much tearing you get. Then once you've removed all of your masking fluid, then brush off any little crumbs um, and we're left with this really interesting spider's web. I think I'm just going to take um, a waterproof brush pen and just run a nice sort of fairly thick line underneath each one of the um, lines of cobweb. And I think that just gives me a little bit more emphasis it makes the cobweb stand out a bit more. It gives it a little a shadow side, if you see what I mean. So it will take a little while, but I'm going to carefully work across all of the um, strands of cobweb. And hopefully that will just pull out the detail a little bit more. And if I'm careful, any of the um, lines are a little bit too thick, I can use the fine liner just to thin them down a little bit. And I hope you can see that already that's beginning to really make the spider's web um, pop out a lot. And also, I hope you can see how pretty that background is. As I say, that was just four colours of, of brusho. Brusho is a really interesting um, material and I highly recommend it, but it can take a bit of getting used to because... Um, say, for example, if you've got a pot and it's called black, if you sprinkle it onto your wet page, um, you won't just get black, you'll get all sorts of other reds and blue colours coming out of it. And exactly the same with all the other colours. Um, here with olive green, there's a very strong sort of orange colour that comes out with it as well. So it's best to um, test out your brusho and play with it because... Um, it can be quite unexpected as each colour contains lots of other colours too. But it's certainly, a, you know, an interesting thing if you love these kind of bright colours and if you like painting in a sort of an abstract or impressionistic way. And I think it's especially good for people that are really interested in um, unexpected happenings on the page. So here's my finished painting and I'm absolutely delighted with it. And here it is against um, a clean background and I'm really pleased with the effects that have been created here. Um, it's Halloween, but it's still got that sort of ethereal um, sense of mystery and beauty. It's not really too spooky, but I think it captures the Halloween atmosphere fairly well. So that was my version of the challenge. And here again is Morgana Rose Art's um, challenge, a Halloween card. So please follow the link below to go and watch her demo, um, which is absolutely brilliant. I'll certainly be following it. I think it's really beautiful. I've got a black cat myself, so um, I'm going to imagine that was my cat there. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And special thanks to my wonderful Patreon group, 
who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy Halloween and happy painting. Bye.